Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, we're going to be installing the VARA modem on the Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so a couple of caveats before we get started uh, with this tutorial. First of all, I am running this on a Raspberry Pi 4. Currently, this will not work with the Raspberry Pi 3. Second, I'm running Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, and it's the 32-bit version. Uh, I have had issues getting it running with the 64-bit. Hopefully, we can get that resolved soon. I did manage to, I believe, get it working once, but it's not perfect. So, I would stay with the 32-bit uh, version of Pi OS for now. Also, I highly encourage you to run this on a test box, not your main Raspberry Pi. However, if you're going to run it on your main Raspberry Pi, definitely back up your system before going any further. This is all extremely experimental for the time being, so a backup will save you if something does go wrong on your main production Pi. And lastly, uh, keep in mind this is beta software and this tutorial may not be good if you're watching it uh, sometime in the future as many of the links that I am referencing today in this video may change. So uh, keep that in mind as well. Hopefully once this comes out as a stable release, we will go ahead and get another video put together and show you guys how to get the stable version installed. So let's go ahead and jump over to the Raspberry Pi and get going. Okay, first let's set the stage for you with what I currently have installed. I have used build a -Pi, the very latest version as of the recording of this video, and I have got Pat, Pat Menu, Conky, FL Rig, Hamlib, and Pulse all installed on this system prior to beginning any of this beta testing. And I went ahead and opened FL Rig and I have it configured for the radio. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and open up a terminal window and we need to run two commands. The first is sudo apt update. And as soon as this finishes up, I will run sudo apt upgrade as well. And by running both of these commands, we'll just ensure that everything is up to date on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so for the time being, we'll just go ahead and minimize that terminal window, and we'll go ahead and open up our browser. Now, this is the forum post that I have followed to get all of this working. I will leave links to this down in the description below, so you can find these posts and these websites that I'm going to be referencing as well. Uh, some of these links are pretty long and crazy, so it'll be easier to leave a link in the description down below. First thing we need to do is we need to get the PAT beta version loaded onto the Raspberry Pi. So this is on a Google Drive account, and I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. The one we're looking for for the Pi is this one here, and that's probably hard to see, but it's the one that ends in ARM HF dot deb so let's go ahead and click on that one and we'll give it a chance to download you will get this warning where it says that google drive can't scan it for viruses that's okay we're just going to go ahead and download that anyway depending on your browser you may see another pop-up box here uh, i don't want to open it right now with the package install i want to just click save to file and say okay once we have that downloaded, we'll just go ahead and minimize the browser for the moment. And let's open our terminal window back up. And let's navigate to our downloads directory with CD space downloads. Go ahead and press return. I'm going to run the ls command and you'll see this new version right here. We just need to go ahead and get that installed. So let's do that by running sudo dpkg space hyphen i space pat and that whole long uh, name right there. We'll go ahead and press return and give this just a couple of seconds to get installed. 
Okay, so now that that is installed, the next thing we want to do, I tell you what, let me just clear that screen out for us. The next thing I want to do is I want to restart PAT. So sudo systemctl space restart PAT at pi. Go ahead and press return. You can also use Conky right now to verify that PAT is still running right over here in the bottom right corner you'll see that it says PAT is active. So that tells me that it did restart correctly and everything up to this point is okay. Now, if you read the forum post, it's gonna tell you that you've gotta modify the config.json file. We're going to use PAT menu to modify that file instead. So from our main Pi menu, we're going to come down to ham radio and PAT menu. You do need to make sure that you're running version 2.7.0. If not, you can pause right here, use the build -Pi update tool, and go ahead and update PAT menu. As long as you're running version 2.7, let's come down to uh, Manage PAT WinLink. And we're going to use this very last option here that says Repair the PAT config file. We'll go ahead and click on that. It's going to ask us for some basic information, so I'm going to go ahead and give it uh, my call sign. Here you will need to put your actual WinLink password. Don't just put password like I'm doing for the video. Next, we need our six digit grid square. And then in this last one, let's go ahead and choose no for this particular tutorial. And let's hit repair the config file. What this is going to do is download the latest config file from my GitHub and install it on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, this will ensure that you get all of those edits without actually having to go in and edit that config file manually. So I'll just hit OK here. I'm going to close Pat Menu. We're done with it for now. And one more time, I'm just going to go ahead and restart the Pat service just to make sure that everything restarts and that Pat is still green over here in Conky. Now, one other way that you can check just to make sure the PAT service is running is you can just run PID of PAT. As long as you get a number returned, you'll know that PAT is running in the background as we expect it to. Okay, so now that we've got the beta version of PAT installed, the next thing we need to do is install Vara. So again, I'm going to come back to the web browser and we're going to navigate over to this wine link on github.com. Again, I'll leave links to this down in the description below. Let's start scrolling down this page so we can find the install instructions here. Now, there's a couple of different ones, uh, a couple of different sets of instructions here. The first one uh, in this gray box is the full install. We don't want to do the full install. I just don't recommend it. The difference between the two is the full install is going to install WinLink Express or RMS Express or whatever the name of it is at this time. The one below that out of this box is a Vara only install. This one uh, is working perfect with the beta version of PAT and this is the one that I would recommend you guys use. So we need to copy all of this command right here. So I'm just gonna highlight it, right click and say copy. Let's go back to the terminal window and I'm going to right click. Uh, you know what, we probably need to be in our home directory. So let's run uh, CD first and hit return. And now let's go ahead and paste in that command that we just copied. And let's go ahead and press the return key. And we're just gonna sit back and give this a few minutes. It will give you a little bit of information about this, uh, this particular script here. Once you've had a chance to read that, go ahead and just press continue. It's gonna take this about 30 minutes, somewhere thereabouts, to install. I'll be back with you guys when it finishes up. Now, one thing I do want to bring up right here, there's a few times while this installation is running that the script is going to appear hung. If you just let it be, it should complete. The other thing is you'll notice right now that I'm getting a lot of uh, errors about drivers could not be loaded. That's pertaining to uh, box 86. So that's not something that we have to worry about. But just be patient and this thing should finish up within 30 minutes or so. 
Now we're about four minutes into this and I've got this pop-up dialog box here that is asking me to configure the sound cards for wine. So let's go ahead and click OK. I've done this before. Once, uh, I've actually done this several times. Once it gave me a dialog box there, the next time it did not. It looks like it did on this particular attempt. So I'm going to simply click on the audio tab right up here in the top. And then right here for my output devices, I'm going to come down and try to find the one that says USB audio codec. Now, remember uh, that I am running the 705, but yours should be something similar to this. So I'm going to, actually, I'm just going to set it to USB audio codec for each of these instances. Might not need it for all of them, but we'll do that for now. I'm going to hit apply, and then I'm going to hit OK. Once I hit OK, the script will continue. Okay, one of the next boxes that you will see will uh, ask you to set up sound cards for VARA HF. So I'm going to go ahead and choose OK here. And it should open up the VARA HF application and allow me to select the sound cards. Okay, so once this dialog box pops up, you just want to make sure that that USB audio codec is selected for both of those. We'll go ahead and hit close here and it should continue on. It should ask us to configure VARA FM next. So here we've got the pop-up window this time asking us to set uh, the sound card for VARA FM. Let's go ahead and click OK here. Takes it just a couple of seconds but it should load VARA FM and allow us to select those sound cards. Alright, so once again for your device input we're looking for that USB audio codec for the 705 and the same thing for the device output. One of them starts with in and the other one starts with out. So we'll select both of those and go ahead and click close there. That application is going to close out and the install will continue. Once everything finishes you should see this setup complete right here. I started this at 1137 local time so that actually only took about 11 minutes uh, probably because I didn't choose to install that RMS Express. So at this point, let's go ahead and reboot this Raspberry Pi before we start trying to make a connection. Now that the Pi has rebooted, I'm going to go ahead and restart FL Rig so that I've got rig control again. We'll just leave it running right there. I'm going to open up a terminal window and we need to run RIGCTLD space hyphen M space four. And this is just going to feed uh, any rig control commands to FL Rig. When we hit return here, you'll see that this looks like it's hung. That's exactly what we expect it to be. So we can just minimize this terminal window. The next thing we need to do, I'm going to attempt a VARA FM connection first. Uh, I'll probably just show you guys how to do the HF side and won't bore you with me trying to find a gateway to connect to. But let's go ahead and double click on VARA FM. When it asks you if you want to execute or execute in terminal, I believe we can just choose execute and give it a couple of seconds here to load. Uh, seems like it takes eh, 10 or 15 seconds maybe to load up. Okay, once that's loaded, you'll notice our audio input meter right here. We do have audio coming in. Uh, the CPU meter is not currently functioning, and I believe these will only work during a connection. So I'm going to go up to Settings and VARA Setup. Let's see, is that the one I need? Uh, nope, I told you incorrectly. Although, if you have a VARA uh, registration key, you can go ahead and enter your call sign here and the registration key. Once you're done with that, just choose Close. And let's go up to settings. Now our sound card is already set, so I'm going to go into the PTT option. Right here, I'm simply going to choose CAT for my PTT. And I'm not sure how much of this here matters, but we'll go ahead and choose the ICOM 705 anyway. So I set that to ICOM 705, the baud of 19200, which is the baud rate uh, for the 705. And I'm just going to leave this as COM1. Again, I really don't think this matters too much. As long as we've got the cat selected up here. I could be wrong and we'll find out in a minute. Let's go ahead and choose close here. And that should have everything configured. 
the next thing I'm going to do is open up a web browser. Now I'm going to use Firefox. You can use Firefox or you can use Chrome, whichever one you prefer. Let's open up a new tab and I am going to navigate to the Pat inbox. Now, your address may vary depending on how your Raspberry Pi is set up. If you've done a basic little test box like I have, this 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 should work for you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and choose action and connect. Right here in this transport, we want to select VARA. My frequency is already set correctly at 145050, so I'm just going to give it the target call sign here, which is WC4EOC-8. Let's go ahead and click connect and see if this works. Okay, I can hear the radio connecting in the background. You will get a pop-up here because I didn't enter my registration key, so I'm just going to click continue to evaluate. And you'll start to see some action happening up here on the gauges. And it looks like I've received a couple of different emails. Uh, one from my buddy, Kenny, over there. He, I bet he's mountaintopping again today. So that takes care of the connection. Let's take a look right down here in the bottom, and you'll see that it shows disconnected. Now that we have that finished up, let's take a look at Vara HF real quick and how we will set it up. So I'm just going to close the FM, and I'm going to minimize this browser window. And let's go ahead and open up Vara HF. Again, we're just going to double click and then choose Execute. Let's come up to our settings once Vara HF opens up. And let's see what all we need. Let's check Vara Setup first. Again, you would enter your call sign and registration key. We'll choose Close there. Go up to Settings and Sound Card. And we've still got the correct sound cards set. So let's just go ahead and close out of this window. And we'll go ahead and open up our inbox one more time. Now I'm going to go up to Action and Connect. This time I am going to again uh, select VARA for my transport. I'm going to enter K0SI. And I want to enter the frequency of 7102. As soon as I press the Tab key, Let's double check and make sure that our frequency changed. It did, so uh, we look good over here in FL Rig. I do need to change my mode to USB-D. Now, I've got another radio monitoring the same frequency in the background. We should be able to hear the digital tones after I click Connect. Okay, so something went astray on me on that one, and what it is, I went over and checked the radio, and FL Rig is actually not connected to the radio anymore. So I'm going to close FL Rig, I'm going to close the uh, Vara HF modem, and I'm going to shut down this Rig Control D command by just pressing Control C. I'm going to restart everything and see if we can make it work on its second attempt. Okay, so I've restarted uh, FL Rig over here, and I've restarted the Rig Control uh, Daemon. Let's go ahead and restart that Vara HF modem again. Once that starts up, I'm going to go back into the PAT mailbox. I'm going to click Action and Connect again. And all of my information is still there. Let's press Tab here. Changes Frequency. Taking a look at Pat, it looks like we've got rig control back again. I'm going to set this to USB-D. And let's go ahead and try that connection one more time. And this time we can hear that audio playing in the background. Now, I went ahead and stopped that. There's no reason to continue because I wasn't getting a response from K0SI. However, I know that everything is configured and working correctly since I was monitoring it with the second radio and able to hear those tones being put out. So let's change things up real quick. Uh, we've covered the ICOM 705. 
which that should be good for both the ICOM 705 and the IC7300. Next, I'm going to move over to the Yezu 891, which should cover the 891, the 857, the 817, and the 897 should be almost all identical. Okay, so I changed over to the Yezu 891. I've got that configured and running in FL Rig. Again, in this terminal window, I started uh, Rig Control D space hyphen M space 4 so that we're piping our PTT commands over to FL Rig. Let's go ahead and fire up the uh, Vara HF modem again. Tell you what, I might also need to restart the PAT server, so I'm going to run sudo systemctl restart pat at pi. Just since I've changed up several things, that might make a difference. Let's go ahead now and open that uh, Vara modem. Now, once that opens up, because we've changed radios, I'm also going to need to reset the sound card. Uh, USB audio device in both of those, and then go ahead and click close. Looks like that radio is coming in a little bit hotter than the other one, so I'm just going to go over to FL Rig, and I'm going to dial back the RF gain just a little bit. That'll drop that back to a little bit better uh, state there. Now let's open up the PAT mailbox again, and I'm going to click Action and Connect. Again, we're going to be using Vara and K0SI. Looks like I've got a bit of a bad connection over my network to this Raspberry Pi. The graphics are not looking great at this particular moment. But let's go ahead and click Connect. I am monitoring on the ICOM 705 just to verify that we've got tones coming out again. And once again, you should be able to hear those tones running in the background. So, the PTT is working correctly. Let's go ahead and shut down that uh, HF modem since it's not going to make a connection again. But the PTT is working and the digital tones are being sent out. So, I know everything is configured correctly on my side. So, there you have it, guys. That's how you get Vara HF and Vara FM installed and running on a Raspberry Pi 4. Keep in mind this is beta, you're liable to run into some glitches until they can get uh, kind of all the little bugs worked out of it, but this does look promising. If you found this information helpful, be sure to click the thumbs up button before you head off, and we will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.